Hey, little Timmy, do you know what alcohol is? Yes, my dad calls it his super juice, but then he gets really loud and yells at my mom and... Yeah, yeah, but do you know how it gets made? No, I'm only nine. Well, let me teach you about five weird ways that people prepare and make different alcohol. I, I really don't want to talk about this. Our first stop is in China with the invention of baby mouse wine. And yes, it is even worse than what you think it is. By drowning living mice in a large bottle with rice wine, it is left to brew for about a year, after which the beverage is safe to consume. However, it is important that the mice are healthy and alive, as sickly death mice would contaminate the brew. Oh man, I can't believe we're out of beer. Yeah, all we got left is this rice wine, but it tastes like crap. Wish we had something to take away from the starchy taste. It's like when God closes the door, he opens up a window. Wait, aren't we Buddhist? Next comes bacon. Bacon is vodka infused with, you guessed it, good old American bacon. Apparently these drinks have been referenced by writers as far back as the 17th century. It's no surprise that this drink is the combination of two countries' love of drinking and eating, something Russia and the US could finally find some common ground on. Chicha is probably my personal favorite. It derives from many parts of South America and was usually made from corn or other maize plants. Sounds super normal, right? Well, it's how it's made that gets my toes tingling. Designated women, known as chicha makers, would chew the kernels for about a minute or so and spit them into a jar. The enzymes from the saliva break down the sugars, starting the fermentation process. Houses with a red or white flag hung would indicate a fresh batch of chicha was good and ready for sale. Flying back to China, we have the official liquor of China, Baiju or sorghum wine. Notice how I put the word wine in quotation marks. When looking at this crude drawing of the drink, you may notice I put very little effort into it. That's because the wine is as clear as the space between Sleepy Joe's ears. You see, the average ABV, or alcohol by volume, of wine ranges anywhere from 5 to 25%, with an average of roughly 18%. These bad boys tend to start at a whopping 40%. This wine has hit the gym and definitely gets some friendly enhancers. <laughs> uh, uh, it's no use. I'm never going to get stronger. Might as well call it quits. Hey man, notice you could use a little help. Why don't you try some of these? It'll get you to where you want to go. And uh, don't worry, this one's on the house. <laughs> uh, oh man, I've never felt more alive. This stuff works its ass off. Is there peas in this soup? Yes, I just put a little- ah, How many times do I have to tell you? Peas are for the weak little drinks! Rah! You better finish your damn peas. Don't look at me like that. If you thought baby mice were messed up, how about seagull wine? Presumed to have been invented by the Inuit people, you simply take a seagull, stuff it into a bottle of water, and let it sit in the sun to ferment into a feathery beverage. No one other than the Inuit people really know what it tastes like because no one has dared to have a taste. But I mean, when you think about it, if my entire life was completely based around snow and ice and slush, I'd want to find a way to forget about everything too. So little Timmy, I hope this was educational for you and helped you learn that anything, literally anything, could be made into alcohol, as long as you believe right here. P please sir, you're hurting me.